Hello, and welcome to this session of Scrum Master Certification Course. In this session, we will look at the processes that are part of the plan and estimate phase. We will also discuss the key inputs, tools, and outputs associated with each of the processes. The processes that are part of the plan and estimate phase are create user stories, estimate user stories, and commit user stories, identify tasks, estimate tasks, and update sprint backlog. Let's begin with understanding briefly each of the processes that is part of the plan and estimate phase. The first process is create user stories. In this process, user stories and their associated user story acceptance criteria are created. User stories are usually written by the product owner and are designed to ensure that the customer's requirements are clearly depicted and can be fully understood by all stakeholders. User story writing workshops, which involve Scrum team members creating the user stories, can be held. The developed user stories are then incorporated into the prioritized product backlog. The next process is estimate user stories. In this process, Scrum team estimate the effort required to develop the functionality described in each user story. The next process is commit user stories. In this process, the Scrum team commits to deliver the customer requirements in the form of committed user stories. Another process that is part of plan and estimate phase is identify tasks. In this process, the committed user stories are broken down into specific tasks and compiled into a task list. The next process is estimate tasks. This is an optional process which involves creating task estimates if the Scrum team sees value in doing so. In this process, the Scrum team estimates the effort required to accomplish each task in the task list. Task estimates could either be determined at the beginning of a sprint for all user stories and tasks relevant to that sprint, or for each task just before the team starts working on the particular user story or task. The estimation can be done using the same methods that were used for the estimate user stories process. The last process in this phase is update sprint backlog. In this process, the Scrum Core team updates the sprint backlog with tasks and details and, if available, the task estimates. The updated sprint backlog will be used in the implement phase to track the team's progress during the upcoming sprint. Let us now discuss the mandatory inputs, tools, and outputs of the Create User Stories process. The mandatory inputs of this process are Scrum Core team, prioritize product backlog, done criteria, personas, and definition of ready. Scrum Core Team The Scrum Core Team is described in Section 3.3.1 of the SBOC Guide. Prioritize Product Backlog The Prioritize Product Backlog contains a prioritized list of business and project requirements written in the form of epics, which are high-level user stories. The prioritized product backlog is based on three primary factors, value, risk or uncertainty, and dependencies. It is also referred to as the risk-adjusted product backlog since it includes identified and assessed risks related to the project. It also encompasses all approved changes that can be appropriately prioritized in the prioritized product backlog. Done criteria. Done criteria are a set of rules that are applicable to all user stories. It removes ambiguity from requirements and helps the team adhere to mandatory quality norms. A user story is considered done when it is demonstrated to and approved by the product owner, who judges it on the basis of the done criteria and the user story acceptance criteria. Personas. Personas are highly detailed fictional characters, representative of the majority of users and of other stakeholders who may not directly use the end product. Personas are created to identify the needs of the target user base. The product owner can use personas to more effectively prioritize features to create the prioritized product backlog. Definition of Ready the definition of ready defines the criteria that a user story will have to satisfy before being considered for estimation or inclusion into a sprint. For more information on the definition of ready, see sections 5.4.2 and 8.5.3.3.
The tool that must be used in this process is user story writing expertise. The product owner, based on his or her interactions with the stakeholders, business knowledge and expertise, and inputs from the team, develop user stories that will form the initial prioritized product backlog for the project. The prioritized product backlog represents the total sum of what must be completed for the project. The objective of this exercise is to create elaborated and refined user stories that can be estimated and committed to by the Scrum team. The mandatory outputs of this process are user stories and user story acceptance criteria. User stories. User stories are a simple way of documenting the requirements and desired end user functionality. A user story tells you three things about the requirements, who, what, and why. The requirements expressed in user stories are short, simple, and easy to understand statements. The predefined standard format results in enhanced communication among the stakeholders and improved estimations by the team. Some user stories may be too large to handle within a single sprint. These large user stories are often called epics. Once epics come up in the prioritized product backlog to be completed in an upcoming sprint, they are further decomposed into smaller user stories. The prioritized product backlog is a dynamic list that is continuously updated because of reprioritization and new, updated, refined, and sometimes deleted user stories due to changing business requirements. User Story Acceptance Criteria Every user story has associated acceptance criteria. User stories are subjective, so acceptance criteria provide the objectivity required for the user story to be considered either done or not done during the sprint review. User story acceptance criteria also provide clarity to the team on what is expected of a user story, remove ambiguity from requirements, and help in aligning expectations. In the sprint review meetings, the acceptance criteria provide the context for the product owner to decide if a user story has been completed satisfactorily. It is the responsibility of the Scrum Master to ensure that the product owner does not change the acceptance criteria of a committed user story in the middle of a sprint. Now let's look at the mandatory inputs, tools, and outputs of estimate and commit user stories process. The mandatory inputs are Scrum Core Team, User Stories, and User Story Acceptance Criteria. For a detailed explanation of these inputs, please refer to the discussions on these in the Create User Stories process. The tool that is to be mandatorily used as part of this process is Estimation Methods. Numerous estimation methods can be used as tools to estimate user stories. Some important tools are, let's begin with Wideband Delphi. Wideband Delphi is a group-based estimation technique for determining how much work is involved and how long it will take to complete. Individuals within a team anonymously provide estimations for each item, and the initial estimates are plotted on a chart. The team then discusses the factors that influence their estimates and proceed to a second round of estimation. This process is repeated until the estimates of individuals are close to each other and a consensus for the final estimates can be reached. The second technique is planning poker. It is also called estimation poker. It is a derivative of the wideband Delphi technique. This is an estimation technique which uses consensus to estimate relative sizes of user stories or the effort required to create them. Next technique is fist of five. It is a simple and fast mechanism that can be used as an estimation practice as well as a general group consensus building technique. After initial discussion on a given item for estimation, the Scrum team members are each asked to vote on a scale of 1 to 5 using their fingers. Used as an estimation tool, the number of fingers displayed indicate the relative estimation value. The value in using this technique is not only consensus building, but also driving discussion because team members are asked to explain the reason for their estimates. Used as a general consensus building technique, the proposal or pending decision under consideration is initially discussed. Then the team members vote based on their level of agreement and desire for discussion. If a team member raises one finger, it means he or she disagrees with the group's conclusion and has major concerns. If a team member raises two fingers, it means he or she disagrees with the group's conclusion and would like to discuss some minor issues. 
If a team member raises three fingers, it means he or she is not sure and would like to go with the group's consensus conclusion. If a team member raises four fingers, it means he or she agrees with the group's conclusion and would like to discuss some minor issues. And if a team member raises five fingers, it means he or she wholeheartedly agrees with the group's conclusion. The last technique is affinity estimation. It is a technique used to quickly estimate a large number of user stories. Using sticky notes or index cards and tape, the team places user stories on a wall or other surface in order from small to large. For this, each team member begins with a subset of user stories from the overall prioritized product backlog to place by relative size. This initial placement is done in silence. Once everyone has placed their user stories on the wall, the team reviews all of the placements and may move user stories around as appropriate. The second part of the exercise involves discussion. Finally, the product owner will indicate some sizing categories on the wall. These categories can be small, medium, or large, or they may be numbered using story point values to indicate relative size. The team will then move user stories into these categories as the final step in the process. Some key benefits of this approach are that the process is very transparent, visible to everyone, and is easy to conduct. The mandatory output of this process is estimated user stories. After the user stories are estimated by the Scrum team using the various estimation techniques discussed in this section, they are considered to be estimated user stories. The next process is commit user stories. The mandatory inputs of this process are Scrum core team, estimated user stories, and length of sprint. For detailed explanation of these inputs, please refer to the discussion on them in Develop Epics, Estimate User Stories, and Conduct Release Planning Processes. Now let us discuss mandatory tools used in this process. Sprint Planning Meeting The Sprint Planning Meeting is used by the Scrum team in the Commit User Stories process to plan the work to be done in the sprint. The team reviews the estimated user stories in order to commit the user stories which they can deliver within the sprint. The mandatory output of this process is committed user stories. The Scrum team commits to a subset of estimated user stories that they believe they can complete in the next sprint based upon velocity. The committed user stories should also be selected per the priorities defined by the product owner. Another output is Sprint Backlog. The list of the user stories to be executed by the Scrum team in the upcoming sprint is called the Sprint Backlog. This is a subset of the prioritized product backlog that contains the committed user stories that are assigned to a particular sprint. The sprint backlog will be further refined with task-level details as sprint planning continues. It is common practice for the sprint backlog user stories and associated tasks to be represented on a scrum board or similar task board, which provides a constantly visible depiction of the current status of the user stories in the product backlog. Once the sprint backlog is finalized and committed to by the Scrum team, new user stories should not be added. If new requirements arise during a sprint, they should be added to the prioritized product backlog to be considered for a future sprint. Now let's discuss the mandatory inputs, tools, and outputs of identify task process. The mandatory inputs, tools, and outputs of this process are Scrum core team, Committed user stories, user stories, acceptance criteria, sprint planning meetings, task list, and updated Scrum board, respectively. For a better understanding of Scrum core team, please refer to the discussion on the inputs of the create user stories and estimate user stories processes. The tool that must be used mandatorily in this process is sprint planning meetings. In sprint planning meetings, the Scrum team plans the work to be done in the sprint by reviewing the committed user stories at the top of the prioritized product backlog. The product owner is present during this meeting to clear ambiguities related to user stories in the prioritized product backlog. This meeting should be time boxed with the standard length limited to two hours per week of the sprint duration. This assists in preventing the tendency to stray into discussions that should actually occur in other meetings, like the release planning or sprint review meetings. The mandatory output of this process is task list. The task list is a comprehensive list that contains all the tasks to which the Scrum team has committed for the current sprint. 
It contains description of each task along with estimates. The task list must include any testing and integration efforts so that the product increment from the sprint can be successfully integrated into the deliverables from previous sprints. Even though tasks are often activity-based, the level of granularity to which the tasks are decomposed is decided by the Scrum team. Another mandatory output of this process is updated Scrum board. As tasks are identified, the Scrum board is updated to show the tasks associated with each user story. Tasks are typically shown on sticky notes placed on a physical Scrum board or as entries under the applicable user stories when using an electronic Scrum project tool. During implementation, as the team adds, assigns, and updates tasks being worked on, the Scrum board keeps getting updated with the additional tasks and status of each task. If the team has estimated the tasks, the task estimates are also depicted on the Scrum board. Now let's look at the mandatory inputs, tools, and outputs of Estimate Tasks process. This is an optional process which involves creating task estimates if the Scrum team sees value in doing so. In this process, the Scrum team estimates the effort required to accomplish each task in the task list. Task estimates could either be determined at the beginning of the sprint for all user stories or tasks relevant to that sprint, or for each task just before the team starts working on the particular user story or task. The estimation can be done using the same methods that were used for the estimate user stories process. The mandatory inputs to this process include Scrum Core Team, Task List, and User Story Acceptance Criteria. Scrum Core Team and Task List are discussed in our previous videos. Let us take a brief look at User Story Acceptance Criteria. Every user story has associated acceptance criteria. User stories are subjective, so the acceptance criteria provide the objectivity required for the user story to be considered as done or not done during the sprint review. That occurs during the demonstrate and validate sprint process. Now let us discuss a few of the mandatory tools used in this process. First, sprint planning meetings. As part of the sprint planning meetings, the Scrum team estimates the effort required to complete a task or set of tasks and to estimate the people effort and other resources required to carry out the task within a given sprint. The Scrum team members use the task list to estimate the effort for the user stories to be completed in the sprint. One of the key benefits of this technique is that it enables the team to have a shared perspective of the user stories and requirements so that they can reliably estimate the effort required. Next, estimation criteria. Estimation criteria can be expressed in numerous ways, with two common examples being story points and ideal time. Story point values are used to represent relative or comparative effort to complete tasks whereas ideal time normally describes the number of hours a Scrum team member works exclusively on developing the project's deliverables without including any time spent on other activities or work that is outside the project. Estimation criteria make it easier for the Scrum team to estimate effort and enable them to evaluate and address inefficiencies when necessary. Lastly, estimation methods. The same estimation methods used to estimate user stories can be applied to tasks as well. Let us now discuss the mandatory outputs of this process. These are updated task list and updated scrum board. The task list is updated to include the estimated efforts that were determined using the detailed estimation activities undertaken in the estimate tasks process. There may also be re-estimations re resulting from changes in the Scrum team's collective understanding of user stories and requirements. Estimated effort is expressed in terms of the estimation criteria agreed on by the team. Typically, the accuracy of the estimates varies with team skills. The updated task list is used by the Scrum team during sprint planning meetings to update the sprint backlog and to create the sprint burndown chart. It is also used to determine if the team needs to reduce its commitment or if they can take on additional user stories during the sprint planning for the next sprint. Last output, updated scrum board. As tasks are estimated, the effort estimates are then updated in the scrum board. 
Now let's discuss the mandatory inputs, tools, and outputs of the Estimate Tasks process. This is an optional process, which involves creating task estimates if the Scrum team sees value in doing so. In this process, the Scrum team estimates the effort required to accomplish each task in the task list. Task estimates could either be determined at the beginning of the sprint for all user stories or tasks relevant to that sprint, or for each task just before the team starts working on the particular user story or task. The estimation can be done using the same methods that were used for the estimate user stories process. The mandatory inputs to this process include Scrum Core Team, Task List, and User Story Acceptance Criteria. Scrum Core Team and Task List are discussed in our previous videos. Let us take a brief look at User Story Acceptance Criteria. Every user story has associated acceptance criteria. User stories are subjective so the acceptance criteria provide the objectivity required for the user story to be considered as done or not done during the sprint review. That occurs during the demonstrate and validate sprint process. Now let us discuss few of the mandatory tools used in this process. First, sprint planning meetings. As part of the sprint planning meetings, the Scrum team estimates the effort required to complete a task or set of tasks and to estimate the people effort and other resources required to carry out the task within a given sprint. The Scrum team members use the task list to estimate the effort for the user stories to be completed in the sprint. One of the key benefits of this technique is that it enables the team to have a shared perspective of the user stories and requirements so that they can reliably estimate the effort required. Next, estimation criteria. Estimation criteria can be expressed in numerous ways, with two common examples being story points and ideal time. Story point values are used to represent relative or comparative effort to complete tasks, whereas ideal time normally describes the number of hours a Scrum team member works exclusively on developing the project's deliverables without including any time spent on other activities or work that is outside the project. Estimation criteria make it easier for the Scrum team to estimate effort and enable them to evaluate and address inefficiencies when necessary. Lastly, estimation methods. The same estimation methods used to estimate user stories can be applied to tasks as well. Let us now discuss the mandatory outputs of this process. These are updated task list and updated Scrum board. The task list is updated to include the estimated efforts that were determined using the detailed estimation activities undertaken in the estimate tasks process. There may also be re-estimations re resulting from changes in the Scrum team's collective understanding of user stories and requirements. Estimated effort is expressed in terms of the estimation criteria agreed on by the team. Typically, the accuracy of the estimates varies with team skills. The updated task list is used by the Scrum team during sprint planning meetings to update the sprint backlog and to create the sprint burndown chart. It is also used to determine if the team needs to reduce its commitment or if they can take on additional user stories during the sprint planning for the next sprint. Last output, updated Scrum board. As tasks are estimated, the effort estimates are then updated in the Scrum board. Let us conclude this chapter by discussing the Update Sprint Backlog process. In this process, the Scrum Core team updates the Sprint Backlog with task details and, if available, the task estimates. The updated Sprint Backlog will be used in the Implement phase to track the team's progress during Sprint. The mandatory inputs to this process are Scrum Core Team, Task List, Length of Sprint, Scrum Board, and Sprint Backlog. Please refer to the discussion on the inputs of the Create User Stories process for a better understanding of Scrum Core Team. And refer to the outputs of the Identify Tasks and Estimate Task processes for a better understanding of Task List. Also refer to the discussion on output of Conduct Release Planning process for a better understanding of Length of Sprint and refer to the outputs of the Commit User Stories process for a better understanding of the Sprint Backlog. 
The mandatory tool for this process is Sprint Planning Meeting. During Sprint Planning Meetings, user stories are committed for a sprint, and tasks are identified and estimated by the Scrum team. Each Scrum team member also uses the task list to select the tasks they plan to work on in the sprint, based on their skills and experience. The Scrum team also updates the sprint backlog and creates a sprint burndown chart using the user stories and the task list during the sprint planning meetings. The mandatory outputs of this process are updated sprint backlog, updated scrum board, and sprint burndown or burn up chart. Let's look at updated sprint backlog. The Scrum Core team updates the sprint backlog with details of the tasks associated with the committed user stories in the sprint backlog. If available, task estimates are also updated in the sprint backlog. The sprint backlog is used in the implement phase to track the team's progress during the sprint. Once the sprint backlog is finalized and committed to by the Scrum team, New user stories should not be added, however, tasks that might have been missed or overlooked from the committed user stories may need to be added. If new requirements arise during a sprint, they will be added to the prioritized product backlog and included for consideration in a future sprint. Another output is updated scrum board. The Scrum Board is updated to reflect the information in the updated Sprint Backlog, including any updates to the task, task statuses, and task estimates if available. And lastly, the Sprint Burn Down or Burn Up Chart. Burn charts, either Burn Down or Burn Up, are used to track progress in a Scrum project. A burn down chart is a graph that depicts the amount of work remaining in relation to the remaining time. Unlike the burn down chart, a burn up chart depicts what has been completed in relation to the remaining time. Burn charts are used in the implement phase to track the Scrum team's progress during a sprint, and to get an early indication if the team will be able to complete all the user stories that were committed to for that sprint. This concludes our session on the plan and estimate phase. Thank you for learning with us!